Hey everyone, how's it going? My name is Fireborn, the God Gamer, uh, and today I'm going to be telling you how to install the Decoration Master mod. Uh, it's what I used to create that Abyss level that I posted a video on, and you can also use it to just play other people's levels as well. So if you're interested in playing that or in playing anyone else's custom levels, then you'll need to install this. So first of all, you will need to go into the description and download these three files. If you don't want to play the map that I made, you don't need this file, but I'll show it for demonstration purposes, just how to get it into your game. Once you've done that, just open up the mod installer. All of these are going to be in the description, by the way. Forget if I said that. <laughs> uh, but once you open this, there will probably be a Windows Defender prompt. Uh, saying it might be infected. Uh, just ignore that, I promise. It's totally safe. <laughs> You'll need to hit uh, more info and then run anyway to get past that. Once it's open, it's going to ask you uh, if you have Hollow Knight installed in like the normal path, which for 99% of you, you will have it there. Uh, but if not, you'll need to browse to your Hollow Knight folder and just click on it and then hit OK. So once that's done, it's going to get the modding API and you'll just need to confirm. Uh, and then you'll get this screen. So get debug mod because it's pretty much mandatory for making maps. You need the invincibility and no clip. So just get that, and then you'll want to manually install mods and point this to the Decoration Master mod. Just hit open, and that's it. So once you've done that, just navigate to your Hollow Knight folder and open up the executable. <clears throat> it's already installed at this point, you just have to change uh, one thing after this. So it's a super easy process. So just, uh, you can see in the top left, Decoration Master is here. And then just quit the game, because we need to open the game for it to make a couple files. <clears throat> so, go, uh, you, you should still have your folder up, just go to Data, Managed, Mods. You'll see Decoration Master Data is here. Then drag the JSON file into here. And there's going to be a JSON file for each room. So if the mod has multiple rooms, there's going to be multiple JSON files. This just modifies one room, which is Dream Abyss. So that's all you need to install someone else's uh, levels. <clears throat> now, the next thing is in order to use the creator, you need to change a text file. So open up the run menu. So hit the Windows key and hold it down and then hit R. And it'll open this up. If you don't have a Windows key, just hit the start menu and then type in run and it'll pop up. And then you're going to need to type this into the run uh, menu. Okay, I'll have it in the description so you can just copy and paste it in. But this opens up the Hollow Knight folder this is where your saves are located. And if you're on something other than Windows, then I'll have instructions below. But there's going to be a decoration decorationmaster.globalsettings.json. So uh, right click on it and hit open with, and you can just use notepad or whatever, really. <clears throat> I'm just gonna use notepad. Create mode here is going to be set to false, right? So when you open it up, it's going to look like this. Change this to true, and then go file, save. Okay, then close this down. And that just lets you toggle on create mode with Decoration Master. Once that's done, uh, the installation is complete. So let's open up the game and I'm gonna show you all how to actually use the mod because it is a little bit tricky to use and it's 
early in development, so there's a lot of glitches, so just be prepared for that. <laughs> First of all, uh, I'm just gonna show you that, you know, the room loads up properly. So I just have a dream gate set there, so I'm gonna go in. Another mod that's nice to have is quality of life. If you want the old speedrunning glitches and like menu drops and stuff, you can enable all of that stuff with quality of life. But def definitely it's not needed, but you can see like the level loads in totally fine. Okay. Um, now in order to turn on create mode, I'm just gonna lower the volume so that I don't have to talk over all the saws and everything. <laughs> Uh, so uh, hit caps lock and it's going to open this window up at the top. You're also going to see editing above my head and there's a number which corresponds to the page at the top of the screen. So you can hit tab to go through the different pages. Uh, tab might also be set by default to open the map. So let's change that to one or something. Just something that you aren't going to hit by accident. <laughs> so uh, once this menu is open, you're going to get a mouse cursor. You can just go up here and you can click whatever you want. And <laughs> you got a Zote head, so that's awesome. Uh, it doesn't do too much, but if you want to just fill a map up with Zote heads, be my guest. Um, now you're, you'll notice that like, you can just place saws and whatever you want anywhere as much as you want. Uh, keep in mind that uh, based on proximity, you're going to hear the sounds of these objects. So <laughs> be mindful of people's ears and your own as well. But you, you can just uh, get saws and uh, eventually the sounds will actually start glitching out. So be careful of that if you care about the sounds glitching out <laughs> but you you just left click on the menu you can plop these things down and it's really straightforward uh, keep in mind you might want invincibility on so you don't hit yourself and cause yourself to spawn very far away uh, so I just have invincibility set to L and you know I can do this stuff without hitting myself because when you are dragging things around um, they actually have collisions, so you can push yourself around if you so please, which is kind of kind of fun to do. <laughs> so we have a lot of different um, objects that we can use. Not all of the objects in the game, but there are enough to create some interesting maps for sure. Uh, be careful with the saws, like I said, because they can make a lot of noise. And something that you will need to figure out is that, um, well, you won't need to figure it out because I'm explaining it, but once you have an object clicked on, you can middle click and you'll get this menu. Okay, so this changes different attributes of the object. So saws can have a speed. It can either be negative or it can be positive, And that just determines like which way it starts off going. Uh, like which direction, so it, it doesn't really matter because it's just gonna end up going back in the opposite direction. <laughs> so unless you want to have a certain cycle as the room loads and the uh, negative or positive of the number doesn't really matter, but it just determines the speed at which it goes. So you can make it go like super fast. Uh, wouldn't recommend it, but <laughs> you know, if you so desire, you can do that. Um, Offset just determines like its positioning kind of. You can change the size of pretty much anything. There are limits, of course, so you can't get too crazy. You can also change the angle at which it goes. So you can have it going diagonally, up, down, left, right, whatever you choose. Span changes how far it goes. So if you have a long span, it's going to go like super far. You have a tiny span, it's going to go not very far at all, but you can have it go like that. That's awesome. So you got like laser turrets, uh, and you can keep in mind, you can pogo on all this stuff. Now, the other main thing that you need to know, 
and this is like uh i hope this gets changed honestly but the way you delete things is by attacking them okay um now attacking with your nail of course uh that's pretty simple but you can also attack with a spell uh, let me just give myself some soul and it just absolutely obliterates your map so do be very careful that you're not casting spells by accident and just wiping out your entire map as i did many times while creating this uh, so the other objects that you'll really want to know about are the soul statues. These are the infinite soul statues. There's also limited ones, but you're probably not going to be using those much, if at all, because it's just three hits and then they're done. Um, these have angles and sizes as well, as you can see. Uh, these uh, spike spears are pretty awesome too, and just keep in mind they make noise. so. I like to use them sparingly, but they're a lot of fun in platforming maps. I think they're really awesome. You have these as well. Um, keep in mind that when you click on this, if you uh, col collide this platform with anything and it gets like kind of stuck, this um, circle that determines like where the object like where the platform will start flipping, like that's determined by the circle, right? So that becomes disconnected with the actual platform itself and it gets like pretty weird. Like just look at the collision right here. That's not what you want. <laughs> Unless you do want that for some reason, I would not recommend it, but just keep in mind that if the circle does get detached from the platform, weird stuff's gonna happen. So just like right click on it so you unclick it and left click on it again and get a new platform for yourself. Uh, I'm not sure what um, some of these do, but you have these which are like one-time pogo pogoable objects, which will refresh when you enter the room. You have these basic platforms. I used a lot of these. These are the limited soul totems, so you can only hit these a couple times. Spikes, you love spikes. Everyone loves spikes. Uh, spike tunnels are sick. Um, the levers and gates don't seem to work right now, which is kind of unfortunate, but it is how it is. These guys, of course, for Explosion Pogo, it's sick. I didn't use any of these in my map, but these are really cool as well. And uh, these are really full. Um, sorry. It, I clicked on this and I got a King's Mold, but... Um, the King's Molds are kind of glitchy right now, so you can you can click on a King's Mold and it's just gonna like fly in a direction. <laughs> um, when you reload the room, it will be sitting where you initially placed it. So it is glitched in that it like flies off, but once you reload the room, it'll be in the spot that you put it, okay? You got crystals, these are one-time pogo bowl as well. Platforms. <clears throat> these are a little bit weird and be very careful if you click on these because you can accidentally place them in your map and not really know where they are so they can be hidden behind walls for example and if they're on the map anywhere in the room they will prevent you from slashing from using spells and there's also like ones for double jump and uh, wall jump as well. If they're anywhere on the map, you can't use those abilities. You have to hit them while you're in non-edit uh, mode, non-create mode, and then they will deactivate. So if you restrict double jump, for example, um, the player will need to hit it in order to be able to double jump. So that means it has to be uh, somewhere the player can see. If you do accidentally put one of these on your map and you're not sure where they are, because that's easy to have happen, just don't click on them at all if you don't want to use them because sometimes they get placed without you actually clicking them. Like there are some glitches with this. So if they do get placed somewhere, let's say they're behind this wall. Uh, let me demonstrate this with dive. So I can't dive anymore. So if I hit dive, I just fireball. 
the way I would deal with this is uh, back up the JS on file of the map that you're making and then just go through the room and I, let's say I delete those walls like that. Now I'll be able to dive again. And then by sequentially deleting layers of the map, you can find out where that restriction was placed and then just delete that one spot and continue making the map. So just be careful if you click on these, they can get placed and that can kind of ruin your map. <clears throat> and that happened to me. And it took me like a half hour to figure it out. <laughs> uh, these are Celeste crystals. <laughs> you can uh, give the player the ability to dash again in the air, so it just refreshes the dash. Yeah, it's pretty cool. <laughs> I didn't use any of these in the map, but I am excited to try them out. And you can see sometimes this uh, info doesn't update when you click on the item, for example, like that. And uh, even the item itself doesn't update. So you need to actually right click to let go of the item and then click on the new one in order to update it onto your cursor. So like that, I can uh, pick up one of these and you, you saw what just happened. I didn't, I don't think I clicked on the fireball, but it picked it up. Maybe I did click on it. I don't know. <laughs> Maybe I missed clicks, but yeah, you can get one of those and you just pick up another double jump. It's sick. It's really cool. Um, I'm not sure what this does. This, uh, I'm, I'm really confused by this. Unvisible attack helper. Uh, you can change the size, the order. If anyone figures out what this does, please let me know. This restricts your C dash. Uh, these are spikes. You can change the angle. And uh, I use them a lot. I didn't use these in my map, but these are, of course, really cool. I would love to see these in some maps, like a map themed around them. These laser bugs, okay, you can see it says, you can't see it while placing it. It has to be on the left side of one of those rectangular platforms. It might work on other platforms, but apparently you have to put it on the left side. I haven't, like, uh, experimented with this, but I have, like, kind of placed a couple, and they work if you put them on the left side. And if you try to middle click, it's just gonna freeze. There's no actual menu, so you have to middle click again to get control back. This is like a little floor slash wall thing. Would be kind of cool to have this in a room, I think. And you have these. These platforms uh, actually uh, like blink out of existence, which is pretty neat. It's just like a new mechanic that's not actually in the game, but uh, Sawyer added it. It's really cool. Uh, this apparently gets rid of uh, hazard respawn triggers. I haven't gotten it to work, but there are ha hazard respawns. Like, a hazard respawn is when you hit a hazard and it spawns you back at a checkpoint. So that's the hazard respawn point. Once you walk here, you're going to activate it. So you, you can see it activated by going here. Now, you're going to need to have checkpoints in your maps, right? That's what you use hazard respawn points for. So let me get rid of this debug menu. And I'm gonna show you the hazard respawn. So this is the guy you want to place in order to set a checkpoint. So if I want a checkpoint right here, then I'll place them there. And you'll see that once I stand on top of them, hazard respawn location updated. So that means that if I hit a hazard, I'll respawn right there. Now note that the maps already have hazard respawn points. Okay, so if you want your respawn points to just be where you place them, you're going to have to know where the hazard respawn points are. And I think there's a way to do it in debug mod, but I don't remember. If I figure it out, I'll put it in the description. <clears throat> Otherwise, like the easiest way to know is just go to the different spots and uh, you can see it res it updated right here so that way I know there's a hazard respawn here okay and when you're designing your maps you'll really want to know that otherwise someone might be respawning in the middle of a spike and they'll just die and <laughs> 
you know, as much of a masochist when it comes to this game uh, that I am, like, that, that's not very fun. So I don't recommend doing that. Uh, and these are all the other restrictions on items. You can also restrict <laughs> the light levels, which would be quite interesting. So you just place these down, and as you place them, there's less and less light. Uh, I think you can, it says you can remove it uh, just by attacking them. So if I turn off uh, edit mode, you can attack it and you get the light back. Be very careful with this because, you know, uh, it, it might not be too fun to uh, have a lot of these on the map unless you, unless you uh, think you know what you're doing, I would stay away from it. <laughs> this is a breakable wall. It's not much to say about that. I think I've gone through most of the, if not all of them so far, or already, rather. Uh, is there anything else to talk about? This is just a word of advice. Don't make your maps, like, insanely difficult. Like, make them consistently doable. Because in Hollow Knight, um, the input polling and stuff in this game is not super precise. So if you have something that's, like, a pixel-perfect dash, uh, it's not going to work out consistently for the player. So just keep that in mind like don't make things super precise don't make things like insanely cramped uh like i know my map is a little bit but i i have a really good understanding of what is and isn't like frame perfect so nothing in the map that i made is even close to frame perfect so just go easy a little bit because <laughs> i'm gonna have to play these maps everyone's gonna be begging me to play these maps so I don't want to have to like bang my head against the wall too much just to get through these maps. <laughs> but I think that's it. So um, the only other thing is if you make a map, then you need to go into, and, and if you want to share it, then you need to go into the Decoration Master mod folder that I showed you earlier and find the JSON files that correspond to the rooms that you edited. And uh, where exactly do you see? I think there's a place where you can see the name of the room. Like, it, it should be pretty obvious, honestly. So, like, oh, scene name right here. So I would need to find dream underscore abyss dot JSON and then share that with everyone else. And if you have multiple uh, scenes that you've changed, then you'll need to zip them all up and the person will need to put that into their uh, decoration master mod folder <clears throat> uh, also you'll notice these mushroom turrets they can actually die but they have 10,000 health so it's gonna take a long time for that to happen <laughs> But yeah, I think that's it. Uh, I hope you found this tutorial useful. And if you have any questions, I do try to respond to anyone like asking questions in the comments, so feel free to do that. Otherwise, um, just keep in mind this is early in development and this is like, the person's not getting paid to do this. So if you want to show your appreciation, I will try to like find some way to like, <laughs> if you want to like donate to this guy, I will try to talk to him to see if he is accepting any kind of donations or anything because uh, the moderators in this community have done like a super awesome job and I hope they can get rewarded for it as well. But yeah, thanks so much for watching. I appreciate you all and uh, yeah, have fun making maps. Peace.